The velocity of a race car in miles per minute is strictly increasing. Oh, strictly increasing. We might have one of these situations, just saying. The velocity is measured at random intervals. Let's stop, pause that thought for a second. Up until this point, every problem we have done, the two we have done, the problem I'm looking for, there it is, there's page one. Um, not random intervals, this was interval of two, 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 two. Uniform intervals is what we've had so far, or 0 0.4, 0 0.4, all the way across. These are random intervals. And the data are shown, data is plural, are shown in the table below. Oh, I said it here, didn't realize that. Uh, the word data is actually plural, most people don't treat it that way, good to know. Okay, use the data in the table to calculate the left and right Riemann sums, determine what the sums represent and if they are over or under estimates. What's the graph here for? For fun, look how much fun we're gonna have. What I wanna do actually is plot the points so you can get a visual for what's happening, which you don't have to. So zero, zero. There is a race car that at zero seconds is traveling zero miles per minute. At one second is traveling 1.2 miles per minute. You don't have to graph this, but I'm having fun. Three is 1.8. Six is 2.1. And then seven is 2.4 miles per minute. That's pretty fast. Okay, and what we're gonna do is find a left-hand sum and a right-hand sum, and if you're like, let's connect some dots, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. So let's start with a left Riemann sum and a right Riemann sum. Sometimes I call them left-hand sums and right-hand sums, but we'll just call it left. I don't know if you caught that, but I think I put a T there. It was let. <laughs> All right, a left-hand sum. I'm gonna do it the confusing way and then I'm gonna show you the visual for it. So our first rectangle is one unit wide and zero units high. Okay, whoa, where'd that come from? Here goes, here goes, here goes, here goes. Here's a left-hand sum. I'm using pencil very lightly because I'm also gonna do a right Riemann sum. So left-hand sum is this. There's my first rectangle. That's the boringest rectangle on the planet. Boring guess. Is that a word? Second rectangle is here. I go up until I hit the function, and then I go over. How far? Well, let's go over to there because that aligns with this point. So how wide is this rectangle? It's two. How would you know that without graphing this thing? It's the distance from one to three. So two. And how high is it? Oh, well, it's one. No, it's 1.2. Okay, can I show you where my hands go in these problems when we do these? Left hand sum. All right, the width is one. I will go with the leftmost function value. Move over. The width is two. Go with the leftmost function value. The width is three. Go with the leftmost function value. The width is one, go with the leftmost function value, one times 2.1. And if you want the visual for the next ones, it would be that one and that one. And we're gonna have an underestimate. We can see it from the graph, but the fact that they said strictly increasing is gonna give that away. And uh, I don't wanna bore you to death by typing a bunch of stuff. I actually have the answer in front of me. So this is gonna be 9.9 9 .9 miles. And this is an underestimate. And I'm not just making that up. It makes sense if, if you connected these and don't. But if you connected these, you'd have a lot of empty space. And you also know this because a left-hand sum is an underestimate when the function is strictly, strictly increasing. And because we don't know what happened in between these gaps and we can't assume, but they told us it's strictly increasing because there could have been some craziness that happened. We went way up and way back down or something like that. But that didn't happen because they said so. Okay, let's do a right Riemann sum. And I'm going to erase some rectangles. Ha <laughs> ha, a little math humor there. Some, get it? Some rectangles. <laughs> oh, let's continue the awkward laugh as I erase my rectangles. Okay, that's over. Um, right Riemann sum. And here's what I do graphically, you know, tabularly, I should say one and go for the one on the right 2.4 actually you could start here do that one but go for the one on the right go for the function value on the right so 
one unit wide, 1.2. So same widths of intervals. It's going to be one, but now it's 1.2 that I'm using. Left Riemann sum, I used the zero. Right Riemann sum, I used the 1.2. There we go. Two, use the one on the right. Two, use the one on the right. Three, that's the distance. Use the one on the right. One, use the one on the right. And to save you time, I got it. It's 13 and a half miles. Is it an over or underestimate? Well, it's an overestimate because you can see where this is going and you kind of have that up here. But if you drew it, we start here on the right. We're going to go up till we hit the function and move. Whoa, <laughs> my aim was off. We move over and there we go. Oh, that's too much. And then we move over and then we come to, oh, that's too much. And then we come over and then we come down, oh, that's too much. Okay, that's too much. See what I mean? Okay, if you connected the dots, but don't. But if you connected the dots, you'd be, you will have colored too much. And so this is an overestimate. So we gained the skills with the graphs that come in handy when we don't have a graph and we can just use a table.